the one at 9.30, one at half one. It needs to be done on this one. It, it's a wee bit out. Um, so when I'm feeling brave... So I'll just turn the volume down there. So just um, just been away for a couple of days, but uh, I thought I'd do a video here on where I've got to on the, the AGC. Um, got a couple of meters there. We've got the, the S meter here, and um, this is just a test meter showing the voltage that's being applied to that the, the, the two stages of the IF. So we've got the first stage here, and then the second stage of the IF. So two IF amplifiers after the crystal filter and on the the second gate we have a variable DC voltage which has been displayed here so this is purely just a test meter while I'm sort of playing around one volt two volts three four five six volts being applied to that second gate and as we can see here as our signal picks up we can see that gate voltage dropping off um, and what we've also added after some comments thank you very much was uh, an LM317 so that's now providing 3 volts to um, both the source resistor um, for the two amps uh, you recall prior to the LM317 we had 4 diodes in series uh, roughly 0.7 volts so 7 fours are 28 so I've just set this notionally to 3 volts so uh, that's why that one there is sort of sticking out now because those four are no longer in circuit and this LM317 through this brown wire is providing the three volts that that was providing so again so as the on the second gate uh, the voltage drops off more towards uh, that sort of two in the one region then we start to approach pinch off um, because it's more negative and uh, essentially we can start to shut down the gain of those two those two stages that red wire there is effectively applying that same three volts to the source resistor and then this red wire here is providing um, that second gate voltage which is coming from our, our AGC circuit there so the circuit itself um, let me just see if I can put that there uh, I initially started off playing around with uh, this circuit here, I hope that's not too bright in the screen, that's not too bad. Um, it's a based essentially around an LM317. Um, so what I initially played around with, I brought uh, the IF in through a 100 nanofarad capacitor, uh, uh, being rectified and then uh, charging up this capacitor here. Across that capacitor I had a 1 meg ohm resistor, uh, and I had a 1 meg ohm and a 1 microfarad capacitor, to give me a timing constant of one second. So I notionally set the resistor to be one mega ohm, and then as tau equals CR, I could then um, make our capacitor the subject and uh, came up with one microfarad. So that's why there's a one microfarad capacitor here. Uh, I had sitting across that capacitor to give us the time constant of one, a one mega ohm uh, trim pot. And then the output of the trim pot, or the, the wiper, was then being provided to this um, uh, this J310 here um, as a, a buffer into our um, our 741 op amp. Um, the way the 741 is set up, uh, it's uh, it's an inverting amplifier because we want to have feeding into our IF amplifiers a decreasing voltage for an increasing um, IF. Uh, strength of the uh, the IF signal coming in so hence our signal is being applied uh, to the inverting input um, the amplification factor so RF over RN uh, and interesting enough uh, in this configuration here the source resistor for this J310 um, is RN for the uh, the biasing so minus 50k so again a trim pot over 10k gives us um, at full resistance, uh, a gain of five. Um, I threw a trim pot in here just to just to essentially play around with the overall amplification of the 741 in an effort to adjust uh, the, the slope of the output and to try and sort of fine tune this. Uh, on the non-inverting input, uh, we have a 47k ohm resistor in series with a 10k pot, and its trimmer is a trimmer pot here as well. Uh, and the swiper is is connected to ground, 
So as we vary that, we can vary the voltage which is being applied to our non-inverting input, which then sets uh, for if we were to put this on to a dummy load or no signal input, we can use that variable pot there to set our quiescent voltage um, for, the, or for the amp. In this particular case, if we go back to here, that's 6 volts. So for no signal coming in, uh, we want 6 volts being applied to our IF amps. Um, also being tapped off the output of uh, the 741, which is essentially a DC, a direct current amplifier here, uh, is our meter, this meter here. Uh, and that's being provided to the negative input. So on the other side we have uh, two trim pots. We have a 50k pot between VCC, or our 13.8, and ground. And then that sets um, the zero point for the meter. Uh, the second, and then I uh, was playing around with a 100k trim pot. That there sets uh, what's being displayed for any given output of um, of our amplifier, our AGC amplifier here. So by um, that one's pretty well straightforward with no signal coming in. We vary that until we get um, zero. Uh, and then for, like I say, any given signal input, we can adjust that to get our, our desired um, signal or our, in terms of S meters. I haven't fully calibrated that yet. Um, I want to do some comparisons with the commercial rig and then in an effort to adjust that, that uh, trim pot there to get a, uh, an indication. So if the other one's saying S5 for a signal coming in, then I want this one to be um, S5 as well. So I initially played around with that circuit and it wasn't too bad, but it was pretty clear that it was a little bit deaf. Um, it, it needed a reasonable strong signal coming in to really start to kick this off. Um, and until that happened, we had our output sort of uh, pretty well pegged on, on 6 volts. So uh, I added in a um, a little preamp, and that's why oh, excuse me, that's why this is now called preamp. So that's now been preceded by uh, another um, quite a common configuration, uh, a JFET in this case, still using because I've got you know, like 250 of these things, J310s, uh, and a 3906. So what I want, what I've done here, um, I'm, I'm using a one mega ohm resistor uh, for the gate because uh, I don't want to load down um, the IF and I'll show you where that's being picked off but it's essentially that last uh, the product detector so I don't want this whole circuit here to load down um, that mixer and uh, the circuits following so I've used a 1 mega ohm um, input resistor there uh, in the end using LT Spice uh, the final configuration which gave quite a good amplification uh, was uh, a pretty standard 150 ohms for the source resistor uh, just using a big um, 100 microfarad capacitor there as, a, as an RFC to force our RF into a, a, a PNP, the 3906 um, and then with some negative feedback there through the 270 ohms and then a 1k ohm for the um, collector resistor there and then the output's been taken across back up into here and that's basically what we have um, being shown over here. So if I was to just change the configuration of the camera and zoom up a bit, we can see the the, uh, the configuration there. So we have our RF coming in through from the crystal filter. We can just see over here through the first IF amp, through the second IF amp. Um, and then the output of that is now going into our product detector, just down there in the bottom left-hand side of the screen. Um, now, coming back to here, so the input of this product detector, um, the input is IF, as well as our BFO, and the output is our AF. If we come back up to where it's coming out of that last IF amp, you'll see a little orange wire there. So that's tapping the output of that second IF amp and it's being fed into through that 100 nanofarad capacitor into that little preamp there. Um, the output of that preamp is just a little bit hidden behind um, this voltage regulator for the Arduino, but it's coming out of that black wire there and then feeding into um, the second part, which was the original part 
of um, the AGC amplifier. And you can see the other two diodes, those are 4148s, and that are rectifying that. And there goes our little uh, one microfarad capacitor, our one mega ohm trim pot, and then the J310, which is the buffer between that input and um, the 741 op amp. Um, there goes a series of trim pots there. Got a bit sort of carried away there, but it was just because I'm sort of trying to work out um, how to configure this correctly. Um, I elected to have a, a number of trim pots around the place, but arguably for trimming the sensor, with well, the sensor, well, the, the zero point, with the quiescent point for the meter, as well as its uh, the gain for it, uh, I needed those two trim pots anyway. And then this one here, the 50k ohm, as we mentioned, is our our feedback capacitor, for, say again, our feedback resistor for the 741. Uh, and there goes that. Uh, 10k ohm pot that's basically setting our quiescent there. So just bring the volume back up again, you can sort of see the signal there. Um, the reason why I've got that little meter here just for test purposes, oh, let me just zoom back, apologies for that. Um, the reason why I got the test meter there was even though they run in sync, um, depending on how sensitive I have the meter which is through that 50k ohm, or 100, say, 100k ohm uh, pot, uh, I can't take a, a direct voltage reading off this. So um, I want to have this as just a, a little test meter, just to keep an eye on what's going on um, as I sort of fine tune this. So just sort of tuning off there. You can sort of see the the S dropping down. Our our voltage on those IF amps is now climbing back up. And they've just gone clear. So um actually it works pretty well actually. Um I was playing around with the commercial radio just before um with uh, an MB3 being played into that and then just playing around with the mic gain. And you can certainly see the old uh, the, the S meter uh, driving hard as it was rectifying that. You can see the voltage dropping right down, and uh, the volume out of the the audio amplifier was it was really pretty good actually. Um, certainly didn't have to adjust the microphone. So again, the uh, the volume control uh, nearly as much. Um, the station is just right down the noise there. Anyway, so um, that's been going on now for, for several minutes, so I probably won't um, belabor this any longer. But um, like I say, this, this whole radio here was very much wanting to, to build it, get something which is sort of half decent, and then once the radio is all built up, um, I can then look to, to uh, fine tune and replace certain parts. So. Um, you know, I can probably do better with uh, with the I say again with the AGC amp there. You know, potentially look at some hang AGC and providing that back to that um, IF amp prior to the crystal filter. But really, at this stage of the game, um, uh, for my my sort of radio here, which is uh, you know quite a simple one, um, I think it's probably about right. So anyway, so thanks very much for the feedback. Certainly uh, for those who provided some comments on those diodes. Um, thank you very much for that. Um, that actually runs really cool, it's quite different. This uh, this is a 7805 which is dropping 13 volts down to 5 for the Arduino and um, that really does run quite warm whereas this one here is dropping 13.8 down to 3 volts so one would, one would think that it's actually dropping in terms of heat uh, more but that runs quite cool so I find that quite interesting. So I might actually look to replace that with a uh, an Alien 317 and see if it runs uh, cooler than this. Anyway, um, what else is worth mentioning? Uh, I did try using a uh, an LM 386N-1 um, in here. It sort of worked alright, but I think I got much better performance out of the 741 op amp. Um, I am looking to use um, a similar circuit to this on the transmit side of the house. So what I'm thinking, um, probably not so much an automatic level control, but 
I'm certainly quite conscious that um, I want to have some kind of uh, reverse SWR protection for the power amplifier. So my current thinking is um, to use that sort of toroid um, around um, the output wire going to the antenna, sensing that, sensing the reverse voltage, uh, amplifying it, and then using that decreasing voltage there to um, to decrease the gain of the pre-driver or the driver, probably the pre-driver on the transmit RF power amplifier train. So that's some sort of sort of thinking as a way to um, to 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 protect those power transistors from high VSWR from accidentally transmitting into no load or a um, a grossly mismatched antenna. Uh, so that's what I'm sort of kind of thinking. Again, not so much in terms of automatic level control with the the volume coming out of the mic amp. Um, but more, like I say, from that reverse SWR protection. Um, so I might look to, like I say, uh, reuse that circuit one way or another. So I think for now, I'm just going to keep monitoring um, this ALC. Uh, I'll leave this in place for a while, just so I keep an eye on what the voltage is, uh, and then look to sort of fine-tune um, the gain of the uh, 741 um I don't need to adjust the quiescent voltage coming out because 6 volts is about right for, for no signal coming in. Um, and then I can sort of play around, like I say, with the uh, the voltification factor here. Um, for interest sake, the reason why, and I didn't mention it before, I've got a, um, if we were to come back to here, that 1 meg ohm as a trim pot, um, it allows me then to adjust the overall gain of of, of the IF, so in terms of AGC, how aggressive uh, the AGC is. Um, the other thing that I haven't tried, um, well I did actually, um, and it was interesting enough, but I haven't taken it any further, was that capacitor there, that one microfarad capacitor, that in conjunction with that one microfarad, say again, that one mega ohm resistor is giving me that time constant of 1. I did try dropping that down to 0.47 and 0.1 um, microfarads to uh, to get a, 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 a um, in terms of time a smaller tau or a time constant uh, and certainly that was uh, as you'd expect um, a little bit more, it was a fast AGC, very fast whereas I think with this one second it's sort of uh, quite a nice compromise between very slow and being quite fast and aggressive so um, like I say um, Apologies for rambling on there, but uh, hopefully that was of, of interest and uh, of use. Um, I think next steps now will be to, in parallel with just sort of continuing to sort of look at the receiver, um, I think we'll move on to the transmit side of the house, uh, and then in around sort of spare time working on, on the software. I'm not so concerned about the software because I just need that sort of that top line working well. Um, and all the sort of the bells and whistles can be worked on on a rainy day, as they say. Um, right, so yes, like I said, so the next steps will be the mic amp. Um, I think I, I'm sort of debating which way I'm going to go with the mic amp. Um, if I want to go sort of analog, so to speak, and use a, a, a 3904 or, or the J310s, or keep it simple and use the um, the 5534, that low noise um, op amp, which is what we used over here um, as the input stage to the uh, the audio power amp. Um, that may be an option there. I'm not quite sure if I want to sort of go uh, discrete or or um, or IC. Um, we will be using that commercial microphone, and we we will be using the PTT switch um, to toggle uh, between transmit and receive. And I think what I will also have to do, um, which is fine, which is all part of experimenting here, is is pull the whole radio apart and rebuild it. Uh, we'll put a, a larger copper um, base plate on and uh, we'll just clean it all up um, as we move towards transmit. Um, that's the plan anyway, so we'll see if we go there. Anyway, 73s, um, thanks for that. Any other comments, please sing out. Um, I'm certainly uh, welcome to ideas and hints and suggestions and the like. Um, I'm certainly not precious in this way in shape or form and I've said many many times I'm no expert in this field and it's sort of 
all about sort of experimenting and and uh, and seeing how things work. Anyway, again, 73s, cheers, and uh, we'll see you next time.